Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another video today and it's not about homeschooling, but it is kind of about questioning the narrative. This time, it's the narrative that is permeating the church. We're going to talk about marrying young and calling out worldliness in the church. topic has been on my mind a lot recently, mainly because I have been focusing on doing four talks for a women's retreat at my church next month, for which I am the featured speaker on biblical womanhood, and also because my 18-year-old daughter just got engaged a week and a half ago, and she will be getting married this July, shortly after she turns 19, and her fiancé is the same age that she is. And I have to tell you that I am over the moon with her choice and her fiance's parents are equally as excited as we all are. But unfortunately, that is not the reaction that we have been getting from a lot of people. And I have to say that these people are believers. And this isn't something that is new. This is something that I see all over the place, even before my daughter ever got engaged. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. As believers, we raise our children up to save themselves for marriage. And we tell them how important it is to just save that one thing for just your spouse. And it is a really biblical concept. Yet, when our children do find someone that they want to marry, it seems that a lot of us start talking out of both sides of our mouths. And while we want children, or I shouldn't even say teenage or children, I should say young adults to save themselves for marriage. On the other hand, we also expect them to wait until their mid twenties or thirties to get married. And do you see why this might be just a little bit off? We are opening them up to temptation when we expect them to not only save themselves for marriage, but to also wait a really long time to get married, especially when they have already found someone that they know that God has brought into their lives. And this is something that I am seeing with my daughter. Now, here are some examples of the things that my daughter has heard since getting engaged. And I want you to just remember that the same people who have been saying these things are also the same people who very often lament the fact that there is so much premarital, premarital sex nowadays. And yeah. So first of all, the, the one that I, we hear the most often is, but they're only 18. Well, yes, they're only 18. However, I know people who waited until they were 40 to get married and they ended up divorced. There is no time period for people to get married in the Bible. It doesn't say to be fruitful and multiply as soon as you have created a solid nest egg and reached the age of 28. It just says be fruitful and multiply. In fact, 1 Corinthians 7, 9 tells us that if someone cannot contain their passions, it is better for them to marry. God always offers a way out in these situations. And so I think that when a lot of us are expecting our children to save themselves from marriage, but then also wait to marry until they are very old, I think that we're forgetting what it was like to be in a relationship. And I think that we're not being realistic and we are really giving our, our children unfair expectations. If someone is raised well, it won't matter how old they are when they get married. If they are following the Lord and if they are staying in the word, their marriage is ultimately going to be going to do better than someone who is not and who is older. Unfortunately, I see a lot of believers who are bringing the world's formula into marriage. And if you take a look around you, you can see that the world's formula isn't working. That divorce rate is pretty terrible, and unfortunately, the divorce rate amongst Christians is also not so good. Do you know why? Because I'm going to repeat myself. People are following the world's formula for marriage instead of what the Bible says, and it's something that we really need to stop. One thing that I actually forgot to point out is that the church that I go to right now is phenomenal. And we are very much like-minded. My pastor is very like-minded on this topic, which really blows me away. I love it. He's done several sermons recently in which he has made the point that if you find someone that you know that God has called you to marry, there is no reason to wait. 
You just do it. And unfortunately, the world tells us to wait and wait and wait. And there is never really a good reason to wait. There are lots of excuses to wait, but never really actual reasons. But anyway, getting back to what I was going to talk about next. So someone that my daughter and I were talking to, we mentioned that she was going to be getting engaged soon. And the woman said to her, don't get married. I know someone who was doing really well and then she got married and her life is a mess. And this was coming from someone who would be considered like a leader amongst women in the church. And I was floored that she would say something like this to my daughter. But unfortunately, what I'm seeing is that not only is worldliness permeating the church, but specifically when it comes to biblical womanhood, especially and the family, I see a lot of feminism entering into the church and it is not having a, a good um, outcome on the people who are attending these churches where these thoughts are, are being, you know, spoken of as if they're normal. We are supposed to encourage one another. Titus 2, 3 to 5 tells older women that they are to encourage their, the younger women, among other things, to love their husbands. We are not to encourage women to not get married. That is unbiblical. And that is not something that a female leader, and when I say leader, I don't mean that she's leading in the church. I just mean that she's someone that the younger women look up to. That's not something that you should be hearing from people like that. Um... Something else that I heard when we were, I, I believe it was at the same event, I was talking to someone else and mentioned about my daughter and she said, well, my daughter just broke up with her boyfriend of two years and I'm glad because I think that my daughter should get out there and she should date several people before she decides that she is going to get married. And I'm thinking to myself, where does the Bible tell us this? Where? Uh, my friend Donita, I mention her a lot, but she has so many gems of wisdom that, again, check out her channel, Prairie Dust. Um, she has so many gems of wisdom. And she, one time, and I know that I'm not going to say it as eloquently as she did, but she, she basically said that every time that you give yourself away to someone, it's like taking petals off of a flower and you can never put those petals back again. There is no reason that you should go out there and decide that you have to date person after person after person after you get married. If something doesn't work out before you get married, that's one thing. But to purposely decide that you are going to break up with someone just because you want to date other people and see what they're like before getting married is completely unbiblical. And again, it's not something that I believe that older women should be teaching younger women in the church. So this last example that I want to share is that I was telling someone congratulated me on my daughter's engagement and I said to her, thank you. And I was telling her that when they came in the house and told me that he had proposed, I turned around and I looked at my daughter's um, now fiance and I said to him, finally, because yeah, I, we've been expecting it for a long time. They have been together for, it'll be two years this July. They're actually getting married on their two year anniversary. So I turned and I looked at him and I said, finally, and I know I said it more than once. And I probably woke up some people in the house because they came in the house after midnight when they told me. So as I was relaying this message, she just looked stunned that I said this. And she said, what do you mean? Finally, they're only 18 and they haven't even been together for two years yet. And again, this is just a mindset that has crept in from the world. The world tells us to wait for marriage. And I don't mean to save yourself for marriage. Oh no, the world thinks it's totally fine to not save that aspect. But the world believes that the actual, um, union of marriage is something that should be waited for until later years, if ever. That is not something that the Bible ever tells us. And what I'm seeing is that all of these mindsets, we see them so much. We see them in articles. We see them in ads. We see them in shows, in movies. And even believers, unfortunately, who, who are in the word, are being influenced by the things that the world is telling us about marriage. Another example of that is... Um, financial, financial stability. That is one thing that is used to scare a lot of younger people off from getting married young because people keep telling them 
No, you need to wait until you're financially stable. You need to make sure that you have this, 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 and this before you get married. And that's not what the Bible says at all. Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33, and I'm paraphrasing here, tells us that we're not supposed to worry about what we are going to eat or what we're going to drink or what we're going to wear. But if we seek the kingdom of God first, he will supply all of our needs. That is the exact opposite of what the world is telling us. The world tells us to rely on ourselves, to count on ourselves for that financial stability that really doesn't exist because you could lose anything at any time. And this is one of those um, attacks against traditional marriage that unfortunately is really starting to take its toll on the church itself. So I really felt led to make this video today because I had to point out the double-mindedness in this church. We cannot expect our children to save themselves for marriage and then in the same breath also expect them to wait until they are much, much older to get married, especially if they have already found someone that they have been called to be with. And I think it's something that we need to share with the rest of the church because we've got to stop letting this worldliness destroy the church. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.